So hello everybody, welcome to issue 37. Um, smallish issue today, but looks like there's loads to do. Um, report, lots of people seem to be reporting um, difficulties with it. So obviously I haven't built it yet, so I can't confirm or deny this. Um, here to help me today is my co-host, Orlix. Hello everyone, how is everyone today? <clears throat> so what you been up to this week? Oh, not a lot, just working, um, playing with Arduinos, uh, <laughs> and built some DeLorean issues, actually. Nice, nice. So, yeah. So, that kind of brings us into what I want to just quickly discuss before we start the build. Um, you will notice that there's a couple of pieces of equipment on my desk that's slightly different. Um, I've got a couple of jumper cables, which you'll recognize this from the Arduino Horlix. Yes. And you'll also recognize this as a multimeter. So, uh, myself and Horlix were, we often chat during the week. Um, you know, we lark about doing stuff and, and, and whatever. And one of the things that we noticed was, um, with the DeLorean build and tell me if you, if you've had this problem as well, Horlix, um, very early on in, in the series, um, just like this Root Master, they're being supplied electrical things, uh, bulbs, wires, um, whatever. But it doesn't actually come together until much later in the build. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, what's happening is it's coming together late in the build, and that's when people are discovering that there's problems. Uh, uh, would you agree or disagree with that, Holix? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, so what we were discussing, um, you know, we were chat. We both got multimeters, and and what we what we thought we'd try and do is each time we get an electric component, we'll actually try and test the component so that we know whether or not it works. So, for example, we're doing a brake pedal today. If we test the wire, and make sure that it works properly, then we know once we come together with the circuit boards. If we plug that in, it doesn't work. The obvious solution will be it's got to be a problem with the circuit board. Yeah. So we're going to be playing with a multimeter today. Yeah. Um, I've also got... Yeah, it should be. <laughs> I love that. Um, As I say, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I had the same with the DeLorean. Uh, there was a, the brake switch on the back of the DeLorean. And I'm so... I didn't think about testing it, but I just, I just had it itchy feet and I wanted to do something and I thought oh I'm going to test that um, basic principles just continuity uh, and I'm glad I did because it didn't actually work um, and yeah. I had to tinker with the it's exactly the same switch as we've got on this root master now exactly the same idea um, and it wasn't making a connection so I did actually have to bend some pins to make it work um, but obviously if I hadn't have done that Oh, but it would have been a lot of backtracking to get back to that switch. That must have that would have so been a nightmare, I bet. It was such a relief that I decided to test it when I did. But it was yeah. it was funny how the idea came about. I mean, I've just bought um well I've actually bought two multimeters. Um being new to electronics, um I've just bought basically when you start out on stuff, you you buy um, the, the best that you can afford and, and obviously when you start a new hobby or a new area you've got lots of things to buy so I bought this cheap multimeter and when I got it I thought it's not gonna it's not gonna be that good and a couple of people have advised me it's not gonna last that long um, I will still get some use out of it um, there will be times when I need two multimeters perhaps testing voltage and amps um, so I got this this better one and we were just obviously once you get a new toy, you got to play with it. And oh, we we had such fun, didn't we? This oh, has got um, God. I think we we're probing everything, weren't we? Yeah. If it was anything that was, I mean, I was testing the continuity of pens and things, um, <laughs> anything that was metal, cans of coke, anything. Um, but I mean, this has got like decibel meter temperature gauges and and all sorts. And we really did have fun. Having said that, you're now all expecting me to be brilliant with a multimeter. Watch it all go wrong on camera. Um, okay, so um, are you guys ready for, for what I think will be a good build tonight? Um, I'm certainly looking forward to it. 
Yeah, definitely. Let's right. just say hello to everyone, shall we, quick? Yes. So we got Roger Kendall, hello. Fleetwood J, uh, Roger Thomas, uh, Love Minis, uh, Dave Say, hello. Uh, Fleetwood J, so uh, Teddy Connor, Izzy Harris, Adrian Langney, 32 Soul, Chris Davies, hello. Fighter Sweet, Daniel Simpson, and Alan Rooney. Uh, I also and, have a hello. Sorry, carry on. Sorry, yeah, I was going to say Daniel Simpson is actually on holiday and watching us from Haggerston Castle, I think that is. Oh, and Alan Rooney's from the. Finally, my wife and daughter got here. Oh, brilliant. So they, they've come over from the Philippines. So hello to Alan Rooney's family. Hello. Um, I've got one more hello to make. I, you know, I've forgotten his surname, but a lovely, lovely chap that I got to know today, a chap called Richard. He now works with me. Um, funny story. Um, obviously, as you can imagine, um, being a bus driver, our company, like my, my company and other companies, they're obviously rivals with each other, but bus drivers aren't. I'll, I'll, I'll be friendly with any bus driver. And there was this one driver with another company and uh oh it, you'd be driving past and you'd be like ah yeah while he's driving hanging out the cab trying to clock you know, hey, at you and uh, i'd be like do i know you and um it, it turns out he's now um he's now joined the company so obviously he's now my work colleague and um, you know he's ever so friendly guy he's like hello to everybody and, and i'm like my God, that's what you're like all the time. People moan how happy I am. They're going to really moan about him constantly. Um, so big hello to Richard, who says he's going to try and watch the show. Uh, drop us a comment if you want. Join in the fun. We, you know, some of some of the people watching aren't even building it. You know, for some reason, people enjoy the show just for the show. So yeah. Um, Right, uh, Dave Milne it's, it's forgot me. <laughs> I thought I said your name, but I do apologise. So yes, hello, Dave Milne as well. Um, I also have an apology to make to everybody. The show was cut short last week. Um, we've been having issues in the house. We had a power cut, oh, um, God, yeah. and when we oh yeah oh oh, um, touch wood, it's been fixed. Um, but we've just had constant power cuts. Um, yesterday afternoon, I came home for an hour, and I think we had four power cuts in an hour. Um, and that, hopefully, they fixed it now. The trip switch kept going, and uh, what it boiled down to was that there's too much load on the house for that one switch. So they put another switch in that can hire, that can handle more, uh, more, more voltage, uh, more, more amps. Sorry, I'm still learning the difference between voltage and amps. Um, so it can handle a higher load for the house. Now, touch wood, it's been installed for over 24 hours. We haven't had a single power trip in that 24 hours. Um, so, you know, I mean, like I say, we did get it restored last week. I mean, it, we, we just go down and we, we switch a couple of things off. Um, it's different things with tripping it all the time. Sometimes it was a kettle, sometimes it was someone's kitchen, uh, shower, you know, different things. So, as I say, hopefully it's been fixed now. Um, right, so, Mr. Horlix, do we have the, um, the? I forget how we do this now. First of all, I'll switch my camera. And we're going to un un unbox. Do I call it an unboxing? We're yeah. going to undo all of the Check pieces. Parts. Yep. Check off the parts. So... New blade I had in this uh, knife at the weekend, as you can see, is extremely sharp. Um, I actually, I was, I was trimming something and I, I slipped very, very lightly and uh, it went straight through my finger. I, I can show you because it's not blood anymore, but oh, it's so sore. If you're a smoker and you're trying to flick a lighter, you, you honestly don't realize how much you use your thumbs <laughs> until you actually have a problem with your thumbs. So let me tip these out. Come on. So like I say, some people have been reporting difficulties, especially with the springs. Um, obviously, I've cheated in the sense that I've seen um, 
people's posts on Facebook. So I've got a couple of bits of equipment which I think may or may not help me. Um, basically, my rule of thumb is is that you don't need the right piece of equipment. You just need something that will work. So if your grandmother's best best cutlery helps you build this, then yeah, nick it and use it. <laughs> so um, why not? Well, um, yeah, I've sure. also, you're going to love this. I've got to show this off. I'm in the process of building myself some, some shelves and I've designed a, a little shelf. Sorry, I can't show it all to you, but, but now my pill trays live in their own little shelves. So um, they're accessible now for me. So I'm getting my work area sorted out slowly but surely. Okay, so would you like to go through the parts? Yep, okay. So 37A is a brake pedal. Okay, and that is plastic, quite flimsy. It looks like a brake pedal. And, yep, that's it. Lovely. 37B is a brake pedal, uh, brake pedal hinge. I think that's it. And I can't tell if that's plastic or metal. I don't know. It's either a very heavy plastic or it's a light metal. That looks metal to um, me because of the shine. Yeah. Compare it to this bit. I think it's metal. We'll find out later on. We'll see what kind of screw goes in into it. Okay, so 37C is the return spring. Okay, and that is obviously only going to go in one way because of the shape of it. Okay. Uh, 37D is the brake switch cable. And that's this. Now, what we've got is we've got a little two-hole two, two -hole plug on one end. And we've got a little metal connector on the other end. doesn't take an awful lot. It's very, very light. So... Obviously, what's going to happen is there's going to be some kind of current going through there, which has been broken by this. And then, obviously, when that makes contact, that will then allow the current to go through. So, it's basically a switch, isn't it? A, a form of a switch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, 37E is an accelerator pedal. And there it is looks very very different to the brake pedal but that's basically what you're going to be looking at with your feet well you won't be looking with your feet but you know what i mean okay 37f is a back panel and it also says that that part is not used in this issue uh, and see issue 38 so right. it's not used in this issue so right. keep that somewhere safe Okay, so I'll pop that in the screw pot at the moment, but I'll keep it by the bus once we finish the uh, the build. Okay, uh, 37G is a switch mount. Okay, and that is plastic. Okay, and then we've got four lots of screws. We've got AM, FP, okay. DP... And a new screw, I believe, RM. Ah. Right, so let me just catch up. FP, uh, DP, and I need a brand new box for RM. So that will go into this one that comes after Q. So let's have a look at these RM screws then. What can you tell us? So they're quite small. They've got a flat head. Ah, totally unique. Okay, and there's, so there's three of those. There's two of the DPs, uh, two of the FMs, and three of the AMs. Okay. Right, so shall we begin the build? Yeah, let's uh, crack on, so. Yeah, going to just grab a quick mouthful of coffee while we're here. So I've just picked up on Stuart Sullivan's comment. Hello, boys. Missed you last week. Just finishing work. 
Um, Alan Rooney says the same problem. I think he said that as I was talking about my power cut. Yeah. And Rob Cheeky Crouch just said, evening, guys. Um, Stuart Sullivan's also saying about um, still awaiting the screw pot. Can we, yes. can we, do you mind? Oh, you can deal with it now if you want. Oh, no, that's fine. Just, just to say that I have got them. I'm ever so sorry. I've had so much on, and I promise I will get them in the post um, this week, or if not, Saturday. So are you telling me I'm not the only one who has problems posting things? <laughs> yeah, I've just come back off holiday. I've had so much going on. I've been working flat out, and I haven't managed had time to get to the post office because obviously they shut by the time I finish work. So I will do it. Um <clears throat> Yeah, he says that's so right. I, I suspect yeah. Stuart is just just glad that they're not they're not lost in the post. Yeah, no, I've still got them here and I promise I'll get them out to you Saturday. So you should get them next week. Well that's all right, because that's given me time to sort my screws out. Right, so would you like to read us the description? Yeah, okay, so step one. We need to take the brake switch cable, 37D, and the switch mount, 37G. Okay, and then check the parts are correctly aligned as shown in the diagram. And then fix it in place with an FP screw. Insert uh, to the right. Uh, the second insert above right shows the parts fixed together from a different angle it does say no keep the wires straight at this stage they will be bent as shown here in the next step okie dokie so what i've done is while you were describing that i was just straightening out my wires so this is where our multimeter comes in so what we're going to do is we're going to just uh Pop, uh, pop the uh, multimeter cables into there. This is why we've got the two jumper cables that I've just... There we go. Because obviously we can't get the multimeter into there, we're going to use the jumper cables. And then it doesn't matter what colour you use. We're going to try and plug... That's not going to go... No. Okay, that's scuppered my plans. However, saying that, there's a little connector on the top there, look. Right, so I you might, might be able to get yeah. the... Uh, might be able to get the multimeter into there. So let me just check with the multimeter switched off. Yeah, right. So I'm going to turn my multimeter to continuity. And what continuity does is, let me remember how to do this. Right. What it will do is it will test whether it's a good connection. So, for example, if I've got my jumper cables, when you basically when you get a good connection i don't know if you'll hear this and i apologize if you don't i don't know if you heard that but it beeps yeah can hear that yeah so for example we want to know say this cable's not not transmitting whatever um so what we'll do is we'll take this each end there's our beep so we know that this cable works so what i'm going to attempt to do this is going to be quite fiddly, and I apologise if you can't hear me. But right, I'm going to pop the multimeter ends into there. And what should happen in theory, when I press this, it should then beep. There you go. Can you hear that beeping? Yeah. No, you can't, can you? Oh, you can, can you? Yeah, yeah. So every time I touch that... It's working. So, I mean, obviously, my other multimeter has got quite large ends. It's still got points on the end, um, but this one's got tiny points. Um, and then just on top there, let me, let me change the focus. Bring that in right close. There you go. So you can see you've got the little just there. So I've put one into there and I've put the other one in there. It doesn't matter which way round they go. And then once you touch this end like that, it'll make the noise. So we know that wire works. And then what we'll do is we will test that again later on once we've actually fitted the brake pedal. And then at least then once we fit it, 
if it then doesn't um if it doesn't work once we've actually fitted it in issue 117 or, or whatever we know it shouldn't be that cable because we've already tested it mm. um, and then so obviously we'll, we'll test it advice. we'll test it again later when it's in situ um to make sure that the the actual switch is operating with the pedal right um 32 sol has just said just an idea for everyone it may be an idea to remove the handbrake while working on the cab as i nearly broke it working on the last issue not done this issue yet um i tell you what i'm actually going to take that advice and i'll tell you why a it doesn't hurt to remove something you know it, i'm i may not break it while um while doing this issue um but if I did, if I don't remove it and it breaks, then I'm going to regret not doing it. So I'm just going to push that out from the bottom rather than pull it up and risk breaking it. Oh, it's got caught. Look, that's why it wasn't coming out. There we go. So I might as well remove it. It doesn't do any harm to, does it? Um, and hopefully if I've got time, I'm going to do with this what I was uh, going to do last week, but I'll leave that as a nice surprise for you later. Right, so, um, yeah, love mini, sorry, yeah, the focus, it's, um, where is my focus point? My focus point will be about there. I'm trying ever so hard to get, to keep everything in focus as much as I can. Lovely, that will be perfect. So, we need uh 37 g and 37 d and there's some can i just bring that up again there's some really nice diagrams there that i find i think that looks really helpful so you've got uh three pictures for one instruction so that's that's helpful so that first one within the in the box one that's a little bit out a little bit small for me um but this this one where you've got the FP screw going through and then the one above it, that shows it from two different angles. So, right, I'm looking for a notch. So if I ha hold this in, oh, there we go. So we've got a little locating pin there. I want that upwards. I want this hole there to my right and I want this circle in in front of me and then i want this the the metal bits pointing away from me with a circle above and that will go in like that and then Perfect. we're going to put an fp screw through there which i'm going to struggle with so and i haven't got my fp screws ready and I haven't even got the screwdriver ready. So what was, the, what was the very first thing you said to me when we were off camera, Orlix? Was it something along the lines of, have you got everything ready? Yeah. And I said, yes. So I've inadvertently lied to you. <laughs> so oh, I'll let you off this time. Wow, you're too kind. <laughs> so, oops, I've just knocked all the screws Well, the thing is, though, today. it's not a big thing, though, is it? Because they're... The screwdriver's just on hand in that nice yeah. uh, stand that we yeah. mentioned last week. There we go. I'm liking that. Um, so anyone who owns an Aurea, I'm using the... Um, oh God, I can't even read it. Let me change my glasses. I always forget to change my glasses. I, I have separate driving and reading glasses, and I really should be reading using my reading glasses. And uh, amazingly enough, I can read things better with my reading glasses. Um, and the funny thing is, when I got told I need bifocals, uh, that's a J treble O. When I first got told I need bifocals, I was managing fine. And then I got separate glasses. And the more I've used my separate glasses, the more I need them, which I find quite odd. So let's get this rotated the right way. Um go so locating pin up circling bit in front and the hole on on the right and that's 
think it's only fiddly because of the size of the fingers. So I need to just get that in there like that. I'll try and lock that in with my two fingers. Make sure that hole is lined up as so. And then we will gently pop this screw in. Oh, that's gone straight in. Straight in. No problems there. Oh, look, that's locked in. So, and I've just screwed that until it stops screwing. I've not over tightened it because it is a plastic screw. So, there you go. Straight in there. No issues whatsoever. Okay. Are you happy with that? Yeah, very good. Okay, let me just have another look at the other view. Um, yeah, I think that matches the top view there. The one in the top, top right. Yeah, including the plastic contact on the bottom. Right, so stage two. Stage two, yeah. So, a turn over the cabin floor. Cabin, it sounds like a, an aircraft, doesn't it? Yeah. Turn over the cabin floor 35A uh, with all the parts carefully supported. Identify the fixing point circled in blue uh, left for the switch mount 37G. Uh, with that cable bent away from the switch mount, fit the peg on the switch mount into the hole on the right in the diagram and then fix the switch mount in place with an AM screw into the hole on the left inset below. Okie dokie. So I'm just having a bit of a struggle here. I'm looking for things to prop. You might laugh at this. Right. So what I've done is I've propped up my the bottom um, with a can of Coke and three, cans, uh, three pot, pots of paint. Um, because I've got the can of, can of drink there because it's trying to push forwards. Um, I've just dropped my cable on the floor. Right, so what we're looking to do then is with the small hole for, uh, to, uh, oh, right, I see, yeah, okay. So you want, I've got the steering rod is going to my right away that way and then i want the metal contact to go away from me directly in front now there's two holes here and you'll see that you've got the steering mechanism there just behind that you've got a square one and then it's just to the it depends on which way you look at it but so it's going from there to the to there there's a locating pin there that's going into there to there and i can see what's going to happen now this um this piece there is going to rest on this bit there and then you've got a hole here where the brake pedal will come so that's going to come round there and it's going to push that onto there so and i'm also looking at the screw hole Let's see if i can bring that in closer that to me looks a bit misshaped so i'm going to expect to not be able to get my screw in there and we are using an am screw um yes okay so what i'm going to do because i don't like the look of that i'm going to do just a little test fit just with the screw before i put the uh the actual switch on as you can see, I've got screws jumping all over the place. I've got a fin. I'm going to need to switch my... Yeah, I'm going to just change my screwdriver head. In fact, I'll keep that out in case I need it again. Right, so... Be careful how you hold this if you're lifting it up. Yeah, that... That looks to me like there was a hole that was way too big that they've then plugged. So, may have to accidentally hide the camera. Yeah. 
Right, okay. I've got another tactic if I need it. A tactic I haven't used since the early issues, which is use a file. Which is a coincidence because I've just bought some new ones. Okay, that's actually going in. And it would help. I've got, still got this wrong screwdriver head. Oh god, that's much easier. Yeah. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we'll get our our WAP. As you notice, I've made new labels for my bottles. I have been busy, just not necessarily in the right areas. Right. So switch is going on with the plastic bit up, going away from into there like so and like I say the metal bits are going to rest on those two protrusions there right and let's try and do this you really do need four hands for this don't you yeah looks like it and I sometimes feel that each issue is a little bit harder than the other one the last one at times but you, you need to have done those previous issues to kind of learn how the, how the build goes together. I'm, I'm finding this fairly, I'm, I'm capable of doing it, but I think if I hadn't, if I'd have gone straight into this issue, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. Right, this is turning and turning and turning. I think that's turning too much. Having said that, it's in really tight. So I'm going to go with that. But for some reason, it won't stop turning. So. And that's fine. I'm the, 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 the uh, just kept an eye on these, that the contacts aren't permanently closed. Sorry, I can't get a really good focus on that. Don't know if you can see it. Now, it actually looks like they're, they're, they're closed, but they're not. You see, there is plenty of movement there. Actually, I might get it better from the other side. That's better, isn't it? But they're not actually closed. So I haven't screwed it down so tight. Yeah, I haven't screwed it so tight that it's permanently contact. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so stage three. <clears throat> yeah, no, we're still on stage two. Oh, we're still on stage uh, two. Don't forget, you need to bend and ah. the wire through those two. Okay, so... Uh, I'm not happy just bending that, so I want to bend it round something. So I'll just find anything really, pencil, pen, screwdriver bit. And I think we'll try and give that... There we go. I don't know if you can see, I'm sorry guys, it's really hard to see if I can move the camera a bit. Yeah, so I'll I'm just going to bend it round something. So that it bends round as opposed to. And we've only got to bend it to there, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. Goes to go through. So I would say yeah. that's fine. Like that. And I'm going to just extend that. I know it doesn't. It does actually. Uh, and I'm just going to extend these wires. So that they come out the other hole at the bottom there. They're going to come up because they're not secured. But, and there you go, I'm doing a Horlicks and getting my... Actually, it'd be better if I do it that way. Or will it? I don't know. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Does that meet with your approval, Horlicks? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm wondering if maybe you should put a bit of masking tape just to secure that. Because if, it, a... if it gets caught, you may end up ripping that out. Okay, right. I'm going to have to disappear for a second then. Um, I don't want to explain why, but the masking tape is outside. I'll be about 30 seconds. Oh. <laughs>
I wonder what Penny's doing with masking tape outside. <laughs> she tries to crack me up. Ron Cheeky Crouch is thirsty. Could do with more parts per issue. It's more of a challenge. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, done things, but I've just done the DeLorean issue 91, and it, it, I mean, to be fair, that only had a few parts in it. Oh, but it took me about an hour and a half to build it. Uh, it was a lot coming together. Right, sorry guys, I'm back with my masking tape. So... Taping the postman up. <laughs> uh, Richard is the... Um, just made a comment. Richard Craig Langley. This was actually the lovely chap that I met today. So yes, Richard, this is the wire I was showing you. See, Richard, can you confirm I'm like a five-year-old when I get my root master? I'm like... I'm shoving it in everyone's faces going, look what I got, look what I got. Oh, I got my new root master. And it's so funny as well because I'm honestly exactly the same. Like when I go into work, like I've taken pictures of the DeLorean or parts that come or my post and I'm ripping it, even the oven element the other day, and I'm yeah. ripped out of the bag and going, look, I can cook now. And I was running around the warehouse showing everyone. And I'm, they were probably I'm, thinking, I'm, very, yeah. I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm very serious when I drive my bus. You know, I I understand there's a, a responsibility there, and I'm responsible for people's lives. But as soon as the handbrake goes on, I'm like, look, 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 look what I've got. Mm. Bondage, okay, maybe. so <laughs> um, right. right. So are we happy with that stage two now? Yes, that's good. So. I've probably overdone it with the masking tape there, but and I've just done little tabs there so I can just pick them up easily. No, it's just a good idea because if that wire gets caught, you may end up ripping it off the yeah. switch and causing a I problem. Mean, I'll see what happens with this, but I'll probably just fold this over and pop a little bit of tape over it. Um, nothing too permanent so that we can, uh, uh, you know, we can just undo it. I mean, I don't know when it's going to come into use. Okay. So step three, take the brake pedal hinge 37B and identify the fixing point on the underside of the cab floor. Uh, so that's that square part. Um, locate the peg in the hole near the steering gear fitted in the previous issue. And then fix part 37B in place with an RM screw through the hole at the end of the part and into the socket near the switch fitted in step two. Right. Okay, so we're going to be fitting this onto this little square one that I mentioned earlier. Just adjust that focus a bit. Oh, I had it and I went a bit too far there. There we go. So, with the steering arm to the right, we've got the hole to the left, and that's going to pop. Oops. Tell you what, I got my tweezers out, didn't I? Why not I use them? So that will go in like... It's actually the locating peg that's the difficult bit. That's interesting, I can't get that in. <laughs> it's me going, telling you how simple it looks. Right, yeah, the locating peg, that's either a little bit too big or that's a little bit too small. As it's only a locating peg, I'm going to get a little needle file. Uh, I'm going to get a round one, if I can find a round one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that into there. Oh, that's actually too small. There we go. I'm just going to scrape away just a little bit of that, just to make that hole slightly bigger. It doesn't, it doesn't make, as you see, I've just taken a bit away, it didn't need an awful lot of effort. And then I will test fit this again. Always take away a tiny bit, you can always take away more. I suspect it's actually the paint on the part. It's causing the problem. In fact, actually, let's, let's take away some of the paint. And that will tell us if this is metal or plastic then. Yeah, that's metal. So 
Well, you said it looked like metal, didn't you? Hmm. Just take a tiny bit away. We know this bit isn't going to be seen on this side. So, that's nice because, um, I seem to have few, so few parts of a bit of a problem. And suddenly I've got something that's causing me a bit of an issue. I am going to double check that, make sure I have, yeah. Yeah, it's just, definitely right. I just, yeah. suddenly, just suddenly thought, oh no, what if I put it in the wrong way? Okay, so, oh, that's almost going. Very, in fact, actually, let's see if I can push it in. Because if that goes in snug, that will actually make my life a lot easier. There you go, that's in. So there's no point in me trying to take any more away from that if it's in. So then I'll just make sure that hole is lined up properly. Oh, too much. It's like the Chuckle Brothers here, isn't it? To you, to me, to you, to me. Right. Does anyone, remember, does anyone know what I had, um, what I'm on about with the Chuckle Brothers? I oh, do, I used to love them. Okay. It just obviously wasn't funny then, because I didn't hear any reactions. <laughs> I'm dad bad at jokes. I keep trying with jokes, but no one ever finds me funny. I think they just, I think they just could laugh at my jokes to stop me from crying and getting upset. Well, actually, I am just the world's worst at actually getting jokes. So, you know, don't go by my reactions because someone's telling the funniest joke in the world, and I'll be looking at them going, uh huh. And then, like, half an hour later, I'll, I'll think about it, and then I'll just burst yeah. out laughing in the warehouse. And everyone's like, you all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just a joke I heard an hour ago. I've just got it. <laughs> right, okay. So I've just got the, uh, the screw ready. Obviously, I've put washing up liquid on because these are going to go into metal. And uh, funnily enough, when I tested that last screw, you know, you remember I've often said... I don't really know if it is making a difference with the washing up liquid, but we're not having problems. Um, I can tell you with that last one where we did a little test fit without washing up liquid. And then once I knew it was going to go in, I put washing up liquid in. I can tell you it was about four times easier. Right. So that one I've just screwed in until it stops. So I'll just check the fit. We know it's going to be tight because it's gone in tight. But I'm, I'm happy with that at this point. It's basically, there you go, screwed as far as you can reasonably. I haven't gone really, really tight with it. And that, I believe, will be stage three. That is it, yeah. So, stage four. Uh, take brake pedal, 37A. Check the orientation of the brake pedal with the driver's cab assembly the right way up. Fit the end of the brake pedal through the hole in the floor near the steering column and then feed the brake pedal through the hole so that there is only a short stem showing above the floor. Right. And then, so. the, and then it says the next two steps give details on how the brake pedal is held in place. You will need to hold the brake pedal in place until it is properly fixed. Right. So this is the stage that some people are struggling with. This and the next stage, I believe. So I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to slow myself down a little bit. And I'm just going to really take my time. And we say this just about every week. You know, we've got a whole week. Um, what we've got a whole week. I mean, obviously, I'm doing this on stream tonight. But if I was doing this just to build it on my own, if I can't get it all done tonight, I'll continue tomorrow and the day after and the day after and so on and so forth. So, brake pedal is going to go this way. And when you think about it, it's, you've got to put your foot there. Sorry, I'm trying to get this there. So, obviously, if we put it that way, with your foot coming from there, that's not going to... Uh, well, actually, that could do, but then it's going to swivel the wrong way. So, kind of have a little think about it. So, it's going to go in that way, which is also how 
the magazine is doing it. So we're going to feed that into there, wiggle it as necessary, and there's a little bit of resistance there where it's wider, and then it'll go in like so. And I think we'll work the distances out. There we go. So that's going to be roughly like that. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, so... I'm not actually going to put that in there because it's not actually told us yet. It's just told us to do that. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. So, this is where it gets a little bit more... Oh, well, I will be honest with you. I've got a Yazoo chocolate mint milkshake. I've got a brand new uh, drink that I got from the shop. Cup coffee and a cigarette all at the ready. I know, I can't believe you have Yazoo chocolate chip mint thing because we don't, they don't exist down here. I've never seen a bottle of that. And yet there's about four or five shops I can buy it from around here. Yeah, no, we, we just have, we do the standard strawberry banana chocolate, that's it. So you might have to send me another bottle, you might have, you might have to send me a bottle of that. Yeah, but it might go off if I put it in the post, will not we? I'll, just, I'll, have to, I'll tell you what, I'll drink another <laughs> bottle and describe it to you again. Yeah. No, I think that those Yazoo's are um, UHT, because you can get them in the warm. Uh, they're, they're not always in the fridge. Oh, that's right, yeah. They've got foil oh, lids, but anyway. I, scupp I scuppered my plans to drink all your milkshakes for you then. <laughs> right. Okay, so, uh, working on the underside of the floor... <clears throat> Align the large socket on the brake pedal, 37A, with the gap in the brake pedal hinge, 37B, as indicated by the red dotted line. Um, using an RM screw, pass it through the hole in the brake pedal and the brake hinge to secure the pedal in place. Uh, and then obviously look at the inset. Okay, can I just and, pause you for a second, Horlicks? Yeah. Can I just ask you just to move that picture to the left a little bit so you can get the rest of the top right picture in? Oh, that oh, is... No, that's my bad then. I, I didn't scan it properly, so I do apologise. I'll just show you what's... what's not much being missed. It's just this bit that I've, I've not caught. So I do apologise. There you go. It's okay. okay. Um... Right, so yeah, I'll uh, what we doing. Uh, Using an RM screw, pass it through the hole. Yeah, pass the it through the hole Yeah, in the brake pedal and the brake hinge, screw the pedal in place, and then obviously the inset. Uh, tape, oh, so yeah, let's do that bit first, and then I'll do the second part of step five. Okay, so... Right, okay, so it looks simple in theory, but you know what looks simple means. So... There is the brake pedal, and we're going to be passing this end of the, of the spring into the brake pedal, and this part is going to be screwed down. So let's do the easy bit first, and we'll pass this through. I'm trying to find an easy way to do it. My oh, brake pedal is you. wanting... Oh, so instead of screwing that on first, you're going to do the spring first. It does say do the spring first, yeah? No. It doesn't? No, right. it says using an RM screw, pass it through the hole in the brake pedal and the brake hinge to secure the pedal in place. So you do that bit Okay, first. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm looking at that and thinking... That's got to be easier to attach it to the pedal first. Because yeah. then you've got the... Shall we do it that way? If, yeah, if you want to. I can always take it apart and go back and do it as per the magazine. So, if, but... right, so in that case, then you take the spring 37C, check the orientation, uh, fit one end into the socket halfway along the brake pedal as indicated by the blue dotted line. And then obviously fit the other end looped end, uh, fit the other looped end over the screw socket on the underside of the cab floor, and then fix it with an AM screw. 
Okay, I'm trying to figure out the orientation. Ah, it's, ah is it going to go through there? No, that's... Right, so... This brake, this brake pedal, the hole in the brake pedal is going to go on this part here. And that will be fixed with an RM screw, which will come through there. Mm -hmm. And the spring is going to go from there to there. So I really do think, yes, if I use my tweezers, I might actually need two pair of tweezers, but I'll try with one. So I'm going to just thread. Sorry if I block this view. Right, I'm going to try and thread the end, because look, you see there's an open end. And I think we can get that through there quite easily. It's just that we've got a small black metal bit and we're trying to thread it through a black hole so I may need to just move these around a bit ah there we go that's a better angle it's just a case of supporting the brake pedal without being too heavy handed because I oops Drop the screw. Because I know that this brake pedal is very weak. And I don't want to snap it. So let's see if I can do this in less than an hour. Am I still on camera? No, up a bit. Up a bit. That's it. It's got to be an easy way and I'm thinking how the easy way could be. What if this may not work, but this is going to give me more room to manipulate. If I come in from the opposite side, there we go, straight in. So I'm in on the wrong side, and I'm going to push that in, then twist it round. like a clock and then pull it out and I've actually got it in upside down but now that I've done it I can work out how the orientation is so right let's try that again then so it's going to come in this way and I'm going to I'm going to come round. Yeah, definitely coming round like this is working because it's giving me more space. There we go. Hook it in from the bottom. It's just a case of moving it round with a good working angle, and it's finding that angle that works best for you. It's not easy. Go. So roughly found the hole. Get it in the hole. There we go. We're in the hole. So, turn the brake pedal round. And continue pushing that spring through the hole. I'm going to have to use tweezers for this. There we go. Got it. Got it. So, push the brake pedal into the hole that I know it's going to go into. And look, we've got that over the hole. So, you see what I've done there? Ah, uh, yeah. So, I've turned, to recap, I've turned this pedal round. That then gives me a little bit more working space. And just, just put it in enough to catch. And then turn the brake pedal around and then continue getting that spring in. And I use tweezers. I found that a lot easier. Pop, pop the, uh, like a dry fit into that hole. And that's gone in quite easy. So, moment of truth. Shall we screw the spring in first or the brake pedal? 
I would screw the brake pedal in first if that right. spring isn't going to move. Um, right. Because you might put strain on the spring. If you put it too much, it will just um, ruin the spring. Good idea. Plus, so I've still got the screwdriver head from the last RM screw. So, but I think tweezers are an essential here. <clears throat> and I, as I've put the screw in, I've realised I didn't put washing up liquid in. But because I'm in a funny position, I am going to go with it. Try not to slip, guys, as I've done. I did manage to just pull up as I slipped. I might actually have the wrong head on. But I'm having to work at an angle here, as you can see. And it's because that screw there is in the way. So, but isn't, didn't they actually say, yes, they did say you may find it easier to temporarily remove the cable assembly fitted in step two whilst completing the step. And that's the reason why this is just, this actually stops you from coming. You want to come in at this angle, but as you can see, the screws in the way. So, I'm, I'm nearly there now, so I'll just go with it. But you may... Have we actually found something where the Aurea isn't the best screw? <clears throat> Perhaps. And there's not really anything you can do, because if this screw head was longer, that would work. And I can't find my screw, my root master screwdriver. So it might actually, I'm sorry to disappoint all those people that have bought the Aurea on our recommendation, but it might actually be worth trying that with the, with the root master screwdriver. Having said that, that is in. It's a little bit of play, but it is in. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got to find the screw now. It's there. That one there. So, let's say I've had a bit of trouble because I've had to come in at an angle. But right. So the next screw will be a AM. Yep. So we call that spring to the floor. Feeling that this is going to be totally the wrong head for this screw. Oh, it's actually a good one. Right, so let's pop a little drop of washing up. It's way too much there. Way, way, way too much. Lubricate, not washing it. Right, so as best you can, move that spring so it's roughly over the hole. I think that will probably be okay. And then obviously you want to come in through the spring, obviously, and then find the hole and then gently, because this is wanting to go all over the place. I really want to keep that at 90 degrees. Really sorry about the bad focus, guys. As I move things, focus kind of changes and also it's quite I, I'm having to hold here and I don't like holding there because it's plastic and this is just ever so slightly bigger than my hand is comfortable with and there we go I'm just going to keep gently screwing this till we get to a stop point there Maybe a bit more. That's fine. Oh, do you know what? That's a really nice return. I like that. Brilliant. However, however, I can't see it making contact. So no. I'm going to have to take this away from the camera. So this is the point where I was suggesting another check with a multimeter. Right. The problem I've got can you see the contact? You can't really see the contact point. Um, but I'm having to push 
quite a way down to make contact. This is how much I'm having to push down. I think that's quite a lot of contact that I have to push down on. But I will now test it with the multimeter to make sure we still have a contact. So, and I think what's going to be easy, you mentioned what, uh, masking tape. Rather than chasing this wire, I'm going to tape this to, to the floor, to, to the desk. And that will save that running around then. So, that's one less hand we need them. Yeah. So, multimeter on, selecting resistance, uh, sorry, uh, continuity. That's working fine. Plug those into there and hold them. Press the pedal. Uh, right. Can you see? It's quite a way down. I've got to press it. See if I can get a better focus. I'm trying to focus in on the pedal, not on the multimeters. And I've got to push. Can you actually hear the beeps? Let me pop this under my chin. Oh. Actually, if you push down, straight down, rather than pushing with the pedal. Yeah, I think that was the thing, because I've seen yeah. a few comments on uh, Facebook about the pedal being a bit flexible. Yeah. If so. you push, If you push at the direction of the pedal, i.e. that way, which, in all fairness, isn't how you operate a pedal anyway. Because when you are... Yeah, push it straight down. And you've got... You don't have to push very far then. But there is speculation that, obviously, because this is an early part of the build, the rear of the um, cab there may aid that to go in the, in the right direction. Right. Okay. But I'm only actually having to press about that much in all yeah. fed to get a contact so but obviously the way that a pedal works anyway if you've got the pedal there like so sorry like this okay let's use this this is your brake pedal or your accelerator pedal and what a lot of people do is they'll put their foot there and they're pushing with their toes there what you actually want to do is push at the top and that gives you a lot more control anyway. And, and obviously, if I do that with this, by putting my finger there, I'm, I'm pushing, you see how I'm pushing it down? And it's not actually working. So it doesn't quite work like a real pedal. You're just going to have to push directly downwards. Obviously, yeah. it's not beeping, so I haven't got the continuity meter on there. But that works really, really well. You don't you have to touch it much. No, at least we know that works. So you're going to yeah. get some results at the end of it. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, Fire Sweep just said, wonder if the pedal should have been met a metal component. And you know what? When I read the uh, post on Facebook earlier today, I thought exactly the same thing. They should have made think? that metal. Um, the problem is, if you've got a metal, um, if that's metal... And obviously, you've got a plastic contact there, but would you risk shorting out the whole bus? Obviously, you've got metal there, along there. All of this is metal. Um, you're going to get metal bodywork connecting, which will then connect to something else, which will go. Could it, could it potentially short out if these are made of metal? Possibly, but then I suppose they could have insulated the metal. Having said that, you've got a metal contact on the metal body anyway. So, yeah, you might be right. Um, yeah, it might be better to be metal, but then again, I think that's fine. If you push it downwards, you have to kind of push it. Because of the shape of the pedal, it's going to be quite natural to push it that way. 
but you don't. You want to push it straight down, and that worked fine. It's actually quite a good little piece of engineering there. There's so much good engineering going into this bottom bit that you're not going to see, which is a, a shame, because you'll just never see it. Mm. But, you know, we'll appreciate it. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with that, actually. Um, it's a little bit fiddly to get that spring in, um, but I think you just got to kind of try and think outside the box a little bit. I couldn't get it in one way, so I tried it a different way. Um, and I wouldn't do it the way they said in the magazine. It would suggest that you're putting the RM screw. Oh, we did put the RM screw in first. Mm. No, actually, it is that is we did do it the way the magazine said. It says to put the spring in onto the pedal first and get that spring in and let it just sit there and hang. Um, and then we've put the pedal in and then we've attached the other half of the spring, which I think that was a good idea because, like you said, it will save wear and tear on that spring. So I think that's gone in relatively well. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, step six, uh, we're going to be fitting the accelerator pedal now. So, uh, 37E, put, place the accelerator pedal in the hole in the driver's cab floor next to the brake pedal. Fix and place with uh, from beneath with a DP screw. Uh, the insert shows the view from beneath. Uh, note the accelerator pedal has a ridge down the front edge that fits into a notch in the socket on the floor. Um, and then it says, if you find the screw a tight fit, try test fitting the screw fully before attaching the part to the floor. Right. Okay. So are they basically saying, take the accelerator pedal, which I've just mislaid. There we go. And popping that into there first. Which that is... That's going in fine. Oh, sorry, I've done that off camera. So I've just done a little, you know how I do it, so just enough so it grabs. So that's that's going in there. That's fine, I'm happy with that. So, right, let's try and fit this accelerator pedal then. So that's going to, oh, I see, it's actually got a keyhole fit. You see the little, let me try and get the focus sorted out. Focus, focus. There we go. See the little keyhole fitting? Yeah. And that's going to match up there, which is the little keyhole. So that will, whoops, try not to drop it and throw it about all over the place. So we will pop that into there and it will fall out again. <coughs> I'm going to move the camera up. I can, it's obvious I'm getting it. I think what might be easier actually if I pop this in and balance it in just long enough for me to get my thumb. Actually, while I've got them out, let's put the tweezers in. So get the tweezers and we'll have the little keyhole bit facing inside the tweezers. Hold that over there like so. Hold it in with my thumb. And just adjust it, which it doesn't actually need adjusting. And then I can come in from... Oh, I can now see what they mean by if the screw is tight. It's got to go through that metal bit. So we'll see what happens. And that's going to go into there. Oh, actually, it's gone in no problems. So you are going to have to push the pedal down because the screw is trying to push it out. So just be gentle. There we go. See how it's tried to screw that pedal out. Mm. So just give it a quick readjust. Let's push. That's not that right out, actually. Oh, dear. That can't be right. Yeah, it's gone at an angle. Okay, guys, we have to take that out and start again. So, in actual fact, my pedal's giving me the most trouble. So, 
I just have to hold that down a little bit harder. There you go. Actually, in actual fact, I think if you give it a wiggle in and out trick that we used to do before we discovered washing up liquid, do that with a plastic screw. And I would suggest only go until, there we go, it's tight now. I could do that up further, check it, that's in nice and solid actually. So there you go. I'm happy with that. So I did notice there was someone on Facebook, was it Kevin? He's actually glued that in and he's accidentally got glue over the, um, uh, over the floor. But I don't think it would be an awful idea to glue it in. Um, but obviously let's try and get it in without the glue. So, but that's in, I, I like that. That's tight. That's not going anywhere. This is, this isn't. Okay. Brilliant. So that is, that's it. That is it. So that is it. That's the finished view. So there we are. Finished views. And that is, let me just compare it to mine. So that's the view, and that's what mine looks like. And then there's, I've even got the, uh, yeah, I've even got the colours the right way round on the wires. Okay, and do you want to show us the other view, Horlix? Go, and this is my view. Obviously, I've not got the handbrake in. Yeah, that looks pretty much the same. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so what did you think then, guys? What I will do, though, while I've got my masking tape out, I might as well try and reuse this part. So I'll just, um, I'll just gather up the wire. We'll just neaten this up a little bit. Just like you said, Horlix. And what I'll do is I will wrap a little bit round like that. And then we'll tape that to there. And that'll actually keep that nice and neat. How's that? Do you all be happy with that? And then I'll pop that on the chassis of my bus. So it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to get knocked off. And lastly, what I will do is I will take this last piece that clearly states in the magazine, say for next week. And I will pop that right in the middle of the cab floor. So it's obvious. And then that's ready for me for next week. Okay, so um, talking of next week, this is next week's stage, and it says switches and dials are fitted to the dashboard, which is then attached to the front of the driver's cab. And we can see that there's a dashboard on there. Um, and I'm wondering what the dials will be like. Because yeah, I'll be interested to know that <laughs> as well. I mean, with what? the uh, other models I've done, like the DeLorean, there was an awful lot of light bleed, uh, and it wasn't a very nice effect, so it'll be interesting to see how they've done that. Right. Talking of lights, there looks like there's a lot more cables there. So are we going to have a, a light-up dashboard? Yeah, definitely. I think so, 100%. Yeah. Uh, and then it looks like it, be it does actually neat. say switches and dials, so yeah, I, I but yeah, and that would explain why we've not actually attached the cables to anything, yeah, because there's more cables to come. It looks so, like, as uh, well, if that image is accurate, that we'll be actually attaching the wires and clipping them in with the uh cable grips, 
Right. Uh, I'm just going to try and do a quick catch up on the chat. Um, I've missed quite a lot. Um, so, who else felt that this week's part should have gone in with last week's issue? I thought I had an empty issue when the news agent handed it over. Um, good point. Good point. I did notice, and I did say right at the start, not not an awful lot of content, um, but there was quite a lot to do. Uh, my own personal opinion is that I want I want a certain amount of time of activity. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go into. Uh, we'll change your camera as well. Yeah, I was going to go into chat chat mode. There we go. Um, I I personally I want um, um, lots to do rather than lots of pieces. Um, one of for me personally, one of the slowest issues was the one where we got the second piece of the chassis because it was six screws. That was it. Five minutes. A whole week's issue in five minutes. This one took me roughly an hour. Um, I was very happy with it. Issue 29, that didn't have a... Well, it had lots of pieces, but it didn't have a mass of actual material. But I absolutely loved it. I think that might be one of my favourite issues because there was so much to do. I was constantly having to think. Um, I'm going to pause you for a second. I've got packet of unopened DP screws. So what have we missed out? Sorry, guys, I'm just going to go through the... Uh... Perhaps they are to be saved for the bracket that we, we'll be playing with in issue 38. Or, or perhaps I've made a big, big mistake. Because if you look at stage six, it says there to attach it with the DP screw. Yep. What did I attach it with then? Can anyone remember what screw I used to put the accelerator pedal in with? I've actually cocked up. I've used the wrong screw. It clearly states in the magazine DP, and I've obviously used something different. <laughs> Perhaps so you used I'm, an um, AP. Have you got any AP screws left on your table? Don't know because I put them all in the box, don't I? Or did you use a DP but get it directly out your pillbox? Yes, yes, of course I did. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah. And there's roughly the same amount in there. Yeah, I remember there being quite a few. Okay, guys, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I mean, I will check the video back later, um, but that's I think that's what I've done. I've gone straight because I put some of the screws in the box. So I, I just got into the habit of taking them straight out of the box. Okay, guys. Okay, ignore me then. So my apologies. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I'm happy now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's... Um, I'm, I'm happy with that issue. It, it did feel a little bit light. We've been receiving quite... I mean, with things like the cab floor and, and the steering wheel... We've been we've been receiving quite a bit of bulk, and I think we are at risk of we get quite a few bits, and then we get used to receiving that many bits, and then suddenly we receive a few fiddly plastic parts. And and remember one thing that I've said before is that we all we all like different elements of the build. What I like, you may not like. Um, so. Some of these issues that I've really enjoyed, you might be sitting there going, oh my God, I don't really want to do that. So it kind of, by mixing and matching it, it kind of cates for everybody. Just, does that make sense? Mm. So, um, right. Um, Ron Cheeky Crow says he's thirsty now. Well, this is my bottle of drink. Da, da, da. And Stop showing off. One. I'm going to try this one. This one sounds odd. It's called Nimbu Pani, Indian-inspired, lemon, cumin, and mint. So it sounds very refreshing, but it's by Sounds Ruby like a mojito. Yeah, I, that was the word I was, I was thinking on the way home. There's an alcoholic drink that it sounds like, and I couldn't remember what it was. And that, that was it. 
Um, so 32 Soul says, yep, it could do with more parts per issue. It's more of a challenge. And then says, good idea, Penny. I would have put that in my vape. I believe that that was in reference to the washing up liquid. Um, Richard Craig Lang Langley says, is that the why you showed me? Yes, it is. Um, Ron Cheeky Craig, she's taping the postman up. You're actually very, very close. Um, the reason I had the what the uh, masking tape was was outside. Um, there's two things actually. I was expecting a parcel today, and I didn't think I was going to be in, so I left a note to say please leave it in a safe place. Um, but we also have a problem with people not closing the door, so I've put a sign up on the front door. And Tony left just before me, and me being lazy where I can, I went, oh, Tony, can you take this note down and stick it to the front door for me? So that's why the masking. But really, you don't want to be sticking notes up with masking tape that's like less than a centimeter wide. It, it really doesn't work too well. Um, so, yeah, you were very close. And Stuart says bondage, maybe. Well, that's, that's, that's another stream. Um, 32 Souls has been watching some of your Bills Horlicks. They're great to watch. I might do the DeLorean. Maybe been looking on eBay for a job, job lot for a good price. So there you go. I keep telling you your Bills are wonderful Horlicks. Now yeah. you're starting to hear it from other people. And on that, I mean, obviously everyone is entitled to their own opinions. Everyone's, as you said, everyone's going to find enjoyment in different parts of the build. But my opinion of the DeLorean is... I mean, I'm sure you've followed mine and others, but I think if it was how it was, I probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah, you've said that a couple of times. If you knew then what you knew now. Um, and um, it's just, there is a lot of a lot of issues with it. Uh, doors being mixed, uh, different colours. Uh, the, the doors aren't lining up, so you might have to bend them. Um, screw holes missing. Bench chassis, all sorts. There's, but I mean, I've been lucky and I've managed to sort everything out. Um, but yeah, I think I don't think I, if I knew what I knew now, I wouldn't have done it. Hasn't there been people who have ordered replacement parts for the replacement parts? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you got to sort of say, is it worth it? Mm. Uh, I mean, I think once you get it, it, I mean, it's a lovely model and. My last latest issue, which isn't actually released yet for another three weeks, I've actually put the shell. This is all one piece now, and I cannot lift this with one hand. It's almost like it's super glued to the table. It's so <coughs> heavy, it's ridiculous. So, you know, in that respect, it's brilliant. You know, it's really heavy, good quality. It's just getting there. Yeah. You know, I've been it's very not lucky. Plenty of detail as well, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's so heavy. I can't lift that with one hand. Wow. But I'm so pleased it's together. Um, and I've even tested all the electrics. I think I showed you, Penny, didn't I? Some pictures. Yeah. yeah. Everything works. That's good. Um, Izzy is saying that Eagle Moss just had a buy two, get cheapest one free. Now, if I had loads of money, wouldn't that be brilliant? Because these, some of these aren't cheap, are they? No. Um, so 32 I was on hold to Eagle Moss for 40 minutes before they answered. Teddy Connor, Eagle Moss are a waste of space. Um, yeah, I, I hear that from, I mean, some people have problems with Harshet, and, and I make it no secret that I had many an argument with Harshet at the beginning. They're, they're starting to get a little bit better, in my opinion. And the Warhammer build is coming through very quickly. Um, I've actually got issues five and six, and they're not due. Well, issue five came out today, and issue six is due out next week. And I've had them since last, uh, since the weekend. So um, they they are getting better, and I wonder if Eagle Moss are as well. Uh, Ron Cheeky Crouch says he was lucky when he's on hold for five minutes. 32 Soul called them about the Ecto Ghostbusters car. That thing is going to be huge, isn't it? Um, I watched Robbie Bobby this morning build the front grille. 
Yes, and... I watched uh, World of Wayne. He did the first two issues. Oh, and the, but, but to be honest, it looks amazing, like the quality and the parts. Mm. I watched him do issue two, and I was like, I want that. Yeah. So yeah, now, I, I'm, I've... now I'm indecisive, X-Wing or the X-01 now. Well, I think I'm I'm not going to be able to do both because I don't think I'm going to have the finances for it. But no, I can't. I need if, to choose one. But now I'm, I'm, I'm sure. almost I'm almost tempted to stop one of my one of my other builds, um, but I'm too far gone and it's and I know the end result is going to be worth it. So um, I may just um, do lots and lots of overtime. I might have to for the next. But one thing I am thinking about doing is is ringing. I don't know if they'll do it, but if model space, if I can make additional payments and accelerate the packs that I get for my Millennium Falcon and Harley, and then once if I can accelerate that enough, then that's finished. I haven't got any more payments to make. So I'll have a word with them about it. Um, Teddy Connor, thing with Eagle Moss, they read from a script. You never get anywhere with them. I, for one, won't be buying. Um, I find they're all like that because their customer service departments aren't actually... Sorry, I'll switch to me. Um, they aren't actually employed by Eagle Moss, Harshet, and the Agostini. They're actually an outside company employed because um, I had a bit of a scare with them. Um, a long time ago, I did the cake decorating, um, and this was at my previous address. Excuse me, and that was done by Harshet. And I actually finished that before I moved to Newport. And I was ringing about a month or two ago. I was ringing Model Space about one of my one of my part part works, and they couldn't find my details. So I gave my mobile phone number, and then they reeled off my old address. And I knew that the only people that had that address was Harshet. So I then started having a go at them about date protections and going, well, why is Harshet giving my address to, to model space? And that's when they explained that they're, they're actually, they're all, the, they're all their clients. They, they work for the same company. They work for like ABC Telesales and their, their clients are Harshet, Diagostini and Eagle Moss. Well, I don't know if they do Eagle Moss, but... Um, they, they, they're an outside company anyway. Mm. Um, Fire Sweep says, definitely get the spring in first. It's far easier. Um, obviously, I've only done it one way. I haven't done the alternative way, but I think that getting that spring in first was definitely the easiest way to do it. Um, Dave Milne says, you would think we'd do this part before the steering. That makes absolute sense. If we'd have done that, there'd be less things getting in our way. Um, Stuart Sullivan says, where did you get the washing up dropper? Um, this particular one I got from a, um, I, I subscribe to a monthly, um, a monthly thing from Asset Drop. This is my latest one um, where every month I get paints and, and products. This is where most of my decent paints have come from. And one particular month I did dropper bottles. Um, but you can get dropper bottles from just about anywhere. You can buy them in hobby shops. Uh, you can buy them on eBay. They're really cheap on eBay. But mm. if you get them on eBay, you might need to buy like 20 or 30 at a time. Um, but or if you get them, you sorry. Can, if So, yeah, another place where you've probably come to it. If you've got a, a vape shop near you, uh, easy ah. shop, they sell them in there really cheap. Just a, really you want a 20 mil bottle. Um, that's all it is. Mine is just a mine is actually a vape bottle, um, right? And it was I think ninety p from my local vape shop. There you go. I would go for that then. Um, this particular one is like ninety five pence from Acid Drop, and then you've got to pay postage on top of that. So it sounds like vape shop would be the best idea. If you paint and you use um, this is a Reaper bottle of paint, um, but if you use Vallejo or or, or anything that comes paints. When the paint runs out, you could always could always use that. But obviously, oh, none of my yeah. paints have run out yet. And war colours, so, they do it as well, don't they? War colours, yep. This is actually a war colours bottle, but it's been rebranded for Acid Drop. Um, this this one's great because it's got a childproof lock on it, look. You see, it's not opening, but if I push down, 
then it opens. And I like it because it's got a really thin tip. I've got some that have got fatter tips as well, but for this job, I think the thinner one is, is better. Um, so Dave Mills said vape bottle. Um, Fleetwood J says this looks fiddly this week, but gives me an idea of what's coming up, which is what the purpose of this show is about. Um, Dave Say says I wondered that, Stuart, which is about the bottle. Uh, Fight Sweep says wonder if the pedal should have been a metal component. We mentioned that, didn't we? Um, very fiddly issue, fun now. Fiddly but fun to come. Looking good. It's a shame that Accelerate is not functional. Now, this came up on Facebook. Um, what would it do? I'm guessing it would just make an engine noise. Um, now, you'll recognize this, Horlicks, but I have here what's called an Arduino, which is uh, sort of electronics as a hobby. Now, they do these... Uh, in smaller versions, this is the Arduino Uno, which pretty much does everything that you'd want for hobby. But they do an Arduino Nano, and I've seen a project where um, you can make like a music player. And if you've got the right programming, which is which is out there to copy, an Arduino Nano, some some a little bit of circuit board, maybe uh, an SD card reader and an SD card. Get yourself a sound clip, put it onto the SD card, fix it all up with a button. You can then, when you press the button, <coughs> excuse me, you could um, get get the Arduino to play the noise, which is something that I might look into. Um, if I could get, let me get the. Uh, I don't know how much space we'll have, but if if for example. Could get the Arduino Nano and or get the switch underneath, and then glue the top of the accelerator pedal to it. Then every time I press that pedal, it's then going to activate the Arduino Nano, which will then play the engine noise. So it's it's all things. Yeah, it would be nice if they'd have done it for us, but it's not it's not impossible to do ourselves. So that's. That's something I'm going to look into. Whether or not I'll be able to do it, I don't know. Um, fiddly job. Oh, I've just lost all that chat. Fiddly job, but all good fun. Tricky but doable. Chris Campling, his usual weekly comment. Hi, sorry, I missed it. How are you, Chris? Um, Paul is saying that he needs an issue number five if anyone has a spare. I'll have a look, but I think don't think I have. Uh, wait till we get the seats. Yeah, no, I was thinking about this today. Do you think we will build all of the floor, then all of the seats? Or do you think we'll gradually work it backwards so we might do a little bit of floor and some seats and then more floor and more seats and so on and so forth? What do you guys reckon? Um... Chris Campling, rubbish flux capacitor. This is obviously talking about the DeLorean. What did you think, Alex? Oh, I absolutely agree. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. But you can get a mod that um, I think that Chloe Power's done with she teamed up with someone and they've done a fantastic job of doing the flux capacitor. However, it is expensive. And so rightly so. I mean, there's so much work that they've gone into it. Um, it's amazing. Um, but you're looking at about 70 pounds just for that. Uh, and unfortunately for me, that is not doable. Um, so I've had to miss out on that. Um, so I've just stuck with the one that's in there, but it's terrible, absolutely terrible. It's not a flux. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it depends how you you want to look at it. I know most of the uh, people doing the DeLorean have bought the mod, but it's just something I can't, I just cannot do. Fair enough. Hmm. Sorry, I meant to keep that one off camera from you. Sorry, I'm being naughty now. We're going to fall um, out. <laughs> Me and you are going to have a bad time. Over a milkshake. Over a milkshake. Um, Teddy Connor agrees with you that DeLorean's not a build he'd recommend. 
Um, Chris Campling says he'd recommend the R2. I, yes, I, I would. Absolutely, yeah. I've had no issues with R2. Everything goes together beautifully. Um, and I absolutely love that issue. I love getting the R2 parts because I just know it's going to... It's just all... The quality is amazing. Yeah. I think they do have um, some sort of quality control, 100%. All the parts are spot on. Um, is it the Diagostini that do the R2? Yes, they they do your yeah. Millennium Falcon as well, and I don't think you've had an issue with that, have you? Uh, I've not had any issues whatsoever with Diagostini, apart from I had a problem with one of the handlebar grips on the Harley Davidson. Why? Right, yes, I remember. Yeah, and I sent them an email, and within 24 hours, I was expecting because I said I can send you vid videos of it if you want. I can send photos, and they just went, "Nope, we'll send you another one out." And within about a week, I had another part come out, and they sent me the whole issues parts. Well, that yeah. was the whole issues, wasn't that? So. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, no Chris. Problems. Chris just reminded me. Sorry, yeah, I did have one issue with the poles. Yeah, you're right. Uh, one of right. them wasn't bored out far enough, but it wasn't just me. It was a lot. I think it was quite a few people. It was sort of fifty-fifty whether you got one or not. But you're um, up to what issue? Eighty-six. 80, yeah, so I had one issue had in the whole. Issue. Lot. I rang them. Brilliant service. I had one within. I think it was within a week, actually, because I was shocked it came so quick. And then I had a new part through the door. So, yeah, yeah. brilliant. So, I'll, I'll chuck this question in there, and then I'll carry on going through the comments. Is it a concern that um, the Ecto-1 is being done by Eagle Moss, which is who the same people as doing the De uh, DeLorean? Do you know what? I thought about this, and... Obviously, Eagle Moss themselves don't actually make the model, do they? They don't produce it. I think they just, they're just they just the publishers. So right. I don't think it's going to matter. Um, so it could well be a case of they've said, right, okay, the people who make the DeLorean are crap. Let's use a different manufacturer. Yeah, I don't even... I'm not, I'm not even sure how it works, but they don't even... They just publish them, don't they, for on behalf of whoever makes the model? I, I actually don't know. I know, obviously, they're a publishing house or magazine publishing house. And they're, aren't they owned by some umbrella company? Mm. Um, but, I mean, based on... But, sorry, based on um, Mike... Uh, sorry, World of Wayne's videos, he did bring up the quality of the screws and how everything was going together and he was super happy um right. so i think it's going to be a good build brilliant okay but uh, you know no one knows that do they until no you've got it in my, your hand my only fear is that once you get to about issue 20 or 30 you've now invested so much money that you don't really want to stop no so, but based on issue one and two that i've seen it did look amazing, and the quality yeah. of the parts were brilliant, um, and it looked amazing, yeah. But the thing that's drawing me more to that Ecto is every, all the electrics with it. It's got sirens yeah. that spin, it's got noise, it's got everything. So, But on the other hand, I've got a vehicle, I've got the DeLorean, so I sort of want to yeah. move away and do the X-Wing, because that's a completely different type of model, isn't it? So, Yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Right, so Teddy Connor says, for the price I've paid out replacing parts after part, I could have built three. Uh, Fleetwood Jay says, just waiting for the Volkswagen T1 Samba Camper. That's due out this month, I believe. He gave me a link, which I've signed up for, and I think they've said it's coming out October. So that's got to be within the next next four weeks. Um, 32 Soul says, that's interesting to know. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, better customer service with Harsh at the Eagle Moss. Uh, yep, looks very tempting. Um, oh, I've lost the comments again. Every now and again, it flicks all the way to the end. Um, Teddy Connor's debating about the Ecto if this DeLorean is anything to go by, which is pretty much what we just said, wasn't it? Uh, Paul is saying, get some Asda 
dry eye drops empty empty at their ideal for the washing up liquid. Chris Campbell says the R2 is the best so far. I think they haven't had any problems other than the projector. Something's just fallen on the floor. Um, that'll have to wait. That was, I don't know what that was. It was metal. Um, metal and heavy by the sounds. Metal and heavy, yeah. Um, but it's not anything. It wasn't the Rootmaster part from this week, was it? The floor? No. No. No, because that's on the route master. Ah. Oh, I'll, fi I'll find it at some point. But what I can't, what I haven't located, is there it is the part that we've got to keep safe for next week. Um, Fire Suite was having a look at the photos of the completed route master. I'm a bit concerned about the screws that hold all of the body panels in. Makes it look a little Meccano-like, micro rivets maybe. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we'll see what happens on that one. Um, Chris Campbelling, LOL, I can't remember what he was LOLing about now. Um, could you 3D print on Horlix? Um, I'm assuming that's something that we were talking about a little while ago. Um, Chris Campbelling says, other than the Poles Horlix, uh, Falcon goes together great. Totally agree with you there. The Falcon, I've had no problems with that whatsoever. Um... Diagostini, a great, very fast response. Yep, Diagostini Mustang was a great build. Customer service was great. They said replacement parts out, no problems. Uh, I agree, 32 Soul Mustang build was great. The Mustang needed, I've just lost the comments again. The Mustang needed a metal rear axle rather than the plastic one. Uh, Chris says that he got the same mug last week, Horlicks. I'll oh, have it in the next video. Brilliant. Show us your mug. Oh, yeah. I've got it, it now. It actually engulfs... There we go. Engulfs your whole face when you take a sip. It is, honestly, about three, four cups of tea worth in the one. Did you... I was just while you're here, did you, uh, did you go on the Wicker Man, uh, Chris, and what did you think of it? Isn't it just the best ride ever? <laughs> right, I'll carry on with the comments until we catch up with Chris. Uh, so Teddy Carter says it's the customer service with Eagle Moss, not the parts, as the DB5 was a fantastic build. Uh, 32 Soul says that he replaced the back axle. I presume that was over the Mustang. Uh, far too much weight for plastic axle. Uh, <laughs> parts. That's Did right. That? No, no, no. Carry on with the comments. I've just seen another one that Chris put. Uh, yes, Ron, I agree with you there. Sounded like a cash register. Is that, that was, reference yeah. to Towers? No, I think that's when you drop that piece of metal on the floor. Oh, and oh that's right. what okay. I was laughing at, because yes, I see where he's coming from. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fleetwood J, I'm hearing that the Volkswagen will be here in two weeks. Uh, yep, flex capacitor, I mean for the 3D print. Ah, yes. Uh, four cups of tea. Tea. First one I did, and it was great. And the very headset. And the very headset one too. The VR even. Put put the kettle on, Horlix. Or kettle. Kettles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that. Right, right. So that's me caught up with the build. So you're what I'm going to do... If I, I'll tell you what. Next time I go to Walton Towers, if you're not there before me, I'll, I'll, I'll get you one. Okay, fair enough then. You I mean, this will last you all day. I could do with a massive, um, a massive. Oh, I've just found. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's disappointing. This is what fell on the floor. A drill bit. Oh. So, a drill bit. As as you can probably see, I'm not going to use that often. Certainly not on part works. So. Um, I suppose you could drill through heavy the next door. Tea. So, the question I was asking about, um, actually, I'm going to do something while we discuss. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes. Um, what I want to do, I'm probably going to do this in two stages now because of how much time. Um, I want to paint this, um, let's change my, hang on, hang on. I'm just going to change my camera angle. And I'm trying to be nice as well. There we go. Right. So I want to paint this. And what? And I've looked at photos. I've talked to people about it. And I did say that this 
Let's build. I was going to do exactly as the magazine does it, but I'm really not happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all of this black, and it'll be a gloss black, which will simulate the black paint. And then I'm going to go over the top uh, selected bits with silver. I don't think I'll have time to do the silver this week. So we'll try and get that in next week. Got to play your time. Um, and the reason I'm going to do the whole lot in black is when you use metallic paints, they tend to work better over black. Um, so I'll just get this started. Now I'm going to be using Revel Aquacolor. And the reason I'm using this particular one is this is one of the paints that came with one of my acid drop boxes. Um, oh, sorry. Just, you... before you, just before you carry on, Chris Campion has got to go. He'll try and make it early next week. Yeah, no worries, no Chris. See you. Uh, thanks for coming and see you next week. And Fleetwood Yeah, Tay thanks for popping in. So what I'm going to do is I, I like acrylic colour. If you're into enamel paints, you could use enamels, but um, I use acrylics for everything. And then all I'm going to do, ever's a simple job, I don't actually like this paint pot, but this is the paint that we got. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to get my, my palette and I'm going to get a knife, uh, a knife, a, a paint brush. Um, I, obviously, I, I do a lot of painting, so I've got brushes for this, that and the other. So this is what I call a base brush, which is just slap and, uh, uh, slap and paint on. And I'm just going to get a little bit into my palette. And then this is this is water soluble, so you can thin it with water. There's way too much paint. I don't know why I keep putting uh, too much paint in. Um, and I'm just going to just... Oh, I lost... Do you know what? I've got a bot. There we go. Um, you can use ordinary water. I've actually got a mix of water, retarder medium, which slows the drying process down and flow improve which just changes the surface tension but you can use ordinary water just give that a slight dilute um, if you use paint straight out of the out of the bottle you tend to get it tends to be a little bit thicker and you could end up with brush marks and uh, but it, at the same time if you thin the paint down you're going to need more coats because the coverage isn't going to quite be there. And I'm just going to go sod it. I'm just going to paint the whole lot. So as you see, it's not quite, but actually that's not sticking. So ignore that. So I'm going to have to pop, I'm going to have to just pop some primer on. This is why I strip. So that might actually, right. Okay. Scuppered that plan. So what I will do is post-production, I will just pop a little bit of primer over that. Um, obviously, whatever paint has been used for this, whether it's bare plastic or paint, I think actually it might even be bare plastic. Yeah, that's bare plastic. That's why the paint isn't sticking. So... Paint doesn't stick to plastic. I think that's... Yeah, is it bare plastic? No, it's actually painted plastic. So, yeah, I don't know why that's... What, what paint that is. So, um, what I'll do is I'll just pop some primer on that. Primer tends to stick to things and then the paint sticks to the, to the primer. So, um, I'll give that a little... I'm going to be doing another paint stream on my Twitch channel on Friday morning. So I'll probably do that then, or I might just do it off camera. And what we'll do is we'll continue. I'll try and get the black on next week, and then we'll put the silver on the following week. Um, so I apologize for that, guys. Um, I thought that was going to go to plan, and it didn't. But then again, it, it enables me to show you how easy it is to use acrylic paints. Um, to clean this brush, all I need to do is just swill it through with some water because it's water soluble paint so cut the taps in a in a cup full of water as you can see the brush is clean it's as simple as that it is a little bit more to it than that with brush care but essentially i haven't had to use any harsh chemicals um and it's done and that will dry in its own time and that's that so yeah sorry about that
Um, so how many tea bags does it take to make a decent cup of tea in the bucket then, Orlex? Uh, I normally put three in, but I don't wow. have an extra strong tea anyway, so that's quite weak. But I think if you like a, a proper tea, you'll probably need four tea bags in there. Right. Oh, so at least it's handy that you can control your tea a little bit more. If you like really weak tea, you can put two in. If you like it really strong, you can put as many as six in. Yeah. Yeah. So I know people that will put two tea bags in a normal mug. How they do that, I don't know. Because that sounds like eight tea bags in your cup. Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, I don't like tea, but having something twice as strong. I've I've been there before. You know, when you get up in the morning, I'm I'm a I drink coffee. I'm a one spoonful of instant coffee, two spoonfuls of sugar uh, kind of person. And what I've accidentally done in the morning, you know, where you're not quite awake. Um, what I've done is I've put two spoonfuls of coffee and one spoonful of sugar in. And I, I, got, I get a real surprise when I do that. Um, but it does wake me up. So... Um, uh, yeah, so Roger Kendall says thanks to the sh for the show. Uh, ch thanks for the show. So see you next week. Good night. Love Minnie says love for all. And I think I am caught up on the comments. So was it a good show? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to next week. Waiting for someone else to comment there if they want to. Obviously not. Oh, what are you talking to me? <laughs> no, I'm yeah, to no. I'm, I'm talking to anyone that listens to me, really. No, yeah. I, yeah, I am actually. It'll be good. I mean, I'm obviously not that far. I'm hoping, obviously, as you were aware from last week, I filmed some of my route master. I've got uh, 14, 13, 12, and 11 through. Yeah, However, I, I watched. Yeah, I, I don't get the time to watch because you release your week master on a Wednesday. Is it about six o'clock? And and obviously with um is it six o'clock you release or is it five o'clock? Hello? Are you on mute? God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, six o'clock. Six o'clock, right. um I do, so <clears throat> because I tend to finish um because I tend to finish round about seven o'clock. And then I rush home and I get the show ready. I don't get to watch your Root Master until I go to bed in the evening. Um, but I, I saw it pop up and it said, uh, build the Root Master issue 13. And I just thought, crikey, that's, you're quite a way in now, aren't you? 13? No, that can't be right. Yeah, yeah. honestly. Yeah, I'm 13. On, I need to have a look. Yeah, I think it should I be 12 first. No, you did 12 last week. Really? Enough. Yeah. That's gone really yeah. quick then. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, well, I'm up to issue 37, which is what? Nine months? Mm. Ten months. Because this came out. This actually came out. Um, I didn't buy it the first week. Um, as you know, issue one comes out and it stays out for two weeks. And then issue two comes out. I actually bought it. <coughs> um in its second week while I was training with Newport. So this is as old as my service with, with my current company. So it'll be interesting to see if I'll still be working for the car. I hope so. Cause I'm doing a bus for them. Um, but I just, I looked at it and I thought, crikey, that's gone really, really quick. Mm, so, it's gone um, mad. That yeah. has gone too quick because I was in a sort of a panic because, as I say, my issue 14 unfortunately had a piece missing, a giant piece missing. Um, I'm not right. sure if I mentioned it last week, but uh, issue 14 comes with the uh, the different rear diff, rear, rear differential. Yeah. And, um, it was quite funny because when I was filming it, and I'm going to leave the original footage in, I was I was blowing the horn saying how brilliant the Root Master was and how all the parts were. I, I was saying, oh, let's check off the parts. Oh, do you know what? I don't even need to because they're so good. I've never had an issue. And I literally, that's why I want to keep it on film to show it's genuine because I just Company couldn't believe world. it. And then I looked and as you can see, there's like... 
the rear diff the rear, the rear differential covers missing here which goes on the other part of that and it just wasn't in the box so i'm hoping they did say 7 to 14 days and i ordered it well, it was probably a couple of weeks ago so i'm hoping that that comes through soon well before next wednesday otherwise unfortunately there won't be a build on wednesday um uh. i could maybe do an update but I try not to do the update videos because I, I find them a bit of a waste of space. Like, yeah. they're okay if it's something important, but I, I if... people don't want to see an update. I mean, it depends, you know, on the circumstances, but I don't want to just put out a video and say, oh, sorry, there isn't a video 14. See you next week because I think that's yeah. pointless. Here's a video to tell you there's no video. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know, really. I'm just hoping that it does come. Yeah, let's just hope it comes. Um, 32 Solar said, how easy would it be to 3D print that handbrake? Um, help me out, Horlicks. I'm thinking theoretically very easy, um, but I don't have the design skills at the moment. Um, mm, I would I say... The editing. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say really difficult personally but only based on my current knowledge of making my own 3d files uh, i've got zero yeah. i mean me and penny tickled one um at a basic level didn't we yeah. um and all and we that, did was edit what we already had yeah so. and i found that quite difficult to keep up with so the amount of basing on the amount of detail involved i think it's going to be very difficult yeah. But that's that's my opinion. But at the same time, someone has designed something like that. Oh, let me get a change of view. You've probably seen this already on one of my videos, but um, I know it's not tiny like the handbrake. But the engineering that's involved in this is pretty amazing. So if someone can design something like that, this is if you break this down to simple shapes mm. i think it'll be really simple and if you make that a lot bigger than it is and then scale it down i think that would be quite i mean if you imagine these bits but like much bigger and then scale it down and then you make the next component scale it down and add the two together yeah. i think that would be the way to do it and the only um, other this... issue with printing that would be how it prints because if that's on a bed you're going to have a flat edge yeah you're going to have to probably put it on a raft but you're going to have to print that in very very fine settings in fact i wonder if my printer would be able to cope with it because mm. i can only go down to something like a 0.06 mil layer level so um but theoretically it's easy but at the moment it's impossible because i just don't have the actual skills to do it yeah um yeah, that's so, a fair statement, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Paula says, thanks for another great show. I'll try and be early next week. Um, Dave say, I've got quite a few of your builds to watch, Horlicks. I usually binge watch four or five issues at a time. And I wanted to bring a new segment to the show, and I've totally forgotten. So this is now going to be a bonus for everyone that watches this late. Um, I am now in contact with a guy that, as far as I'm concerned, what he doesn't know about the Rootmaster isn't worth knowing. He just knows so much. And uh, he likes to chuck little interesting facts at me. And this is one that he threw at me on Monday. Um, and he told me that the early Rootmasters used to catch fire if you left them in gear. Because what happened was um, the pressure built up pretty much like a pressure cooker effect. Um, if there's no release of pressure, the temperature will just build up and build up until it catches fire. And what they, the way they got round it, and I, I, I keep trying to have a look at my chassis, but on the flywheel, what they did is they put in a little lead plug. And the theory is that this lead plug will melt before the steel does, which will then create a hole which will then es let all the pressure escape. And that saved the root masters from catching fire, which I thought was a really interesting fact. 
um, and there's my alarm for the bins. So it's pretty much I know I don't know much too much about mechanics, but I know that on a normal car you've got these little plugs, and they're only about 50p to buy. But if the pressure builds up too much in the engine, these plugs will just fly out. And uh, if you didn't have those plugs, the pressure would build so much that the engine would just crack into pieces and it will just wreck your whole engine. So rather than have to spend thousands and thousands on a new engine, you just have to spend 50p on replacing these plugs. And that's pretty much the same principle there. So I'm looking for a little nobule on the flywheel, which I suspect won't be there because this is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is an early route master. Um, or is it? It's eight five seven. So I don't know. So um, I'll have to look. I'll have to look. But I'm going to keep looking. I'm looking for a little nobule on. There's a couple of nobules, but they look like bolt holes. Um, so I'll try and investigate that. But I thought that was a really interesting fact, and I'm going to try and bring you an interesting fact every week. Um, also, I might have mentioned. Um, Oh, there we go. Teddy Connor says they had that on the steam traction engines, the lead plugs. Right. So at least you know what I'm talking about because lead has a lower melting point than, than steel. So obviously that will melt. Once it melts, it creates a hole. Pressure is very lazy. It will always take the path of least resistance. So it'll all come flying at that little hole. Um, so I might have mentioned, I think I mentioned last week, that I've got access to kind of a, a handwritten manual, like a Haynes manual. Um, I can't remove it from the source, um, but I'm allowed to copy it. And I think I'm going to be able to copy it, not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after, which involves me taking my scanner into this place and sitting there and, and taking copies. Um, so I bought myself loads of print cartridges, and I'm going to take that in. The only drawback is, is that I won't be able to tell you where I got it from. I won't be able to give you copies. Um, I can share any information that I want, and if I give you any information, I'll actually have to physically write it up as though it's me who wrote the manual in that kind of fashion. But... It's an A4 ring binder, absolutely packed full of drawings and, and text and all sorts. And I think that we are extremely lucky to get hold of that. And I keep trying to buy this guy something in exchange for letting me have access. Beers, chocolates, whatever, but he won't have any of it. So the only thing I can do is just keep buying him cups of coffee while I'm copying this manual. Mm. So that will that information will be shared obviously with everyone because that's the idea of this show is information sharing. Um so 32 Soul says I have no clue about 3D, but I'm willing to learn. I buy a few 1 to 18 cars with missing wing mirrors, trims. Always wonder if I could 3D print them, but judging by what you guys say, it's a lot trickier. Um I don't I, I, my honest answer is I don't know how tricky it is. Um, and the thing <coughs> is, I'll, I'll just say, I mean, obviously, 32 so I don't know if you've got a 3D printer, but you, there's loads of software out there. Like, we, we're just starting out with um, Tinkercad online. Yeah. It's free service to use. Go on there and just have a go. Just build, have a go at designing something. Just because you haven't got the 3D printer yet doesn't mean you can't design something. And I'm sure Penny would agree, if you do decide to design something and you think, oh, yeah, that looks good, chuck us, chuck me or Penny over the farm. We'll be more than happy to print it for you. Yeah, no, no problems. No problems. Um, a bit of software that I've downloaded is a program called Fusion 360, which I understand is CAD software that's been adapted for, for 3D modeling, or, or it is CAD software. Um, I really have no idea with CAD software. Some people I know that have used CAD software have looked at it and gone, yeah, that's simple enough. But it's like most things. If you know what you're doing, something different 
um, is is simple. If you haven't got a clue, you know, uh, so I tell the newbies with the bus routes, there's a couple of routes that we've got that are really, really easy. But if you do not know the route, it's a really hard route. You only need one trip to learn it. But once you know it, you know it. So, uh, um, but <coughs> but yeah, like like Horlick says, thirty two style. If you if you if you want to make a file, we'll quite happily print it off for you. I mean, I'll I'll run it through my slicing software. I'll have a look. I'll make sure it prints okay, and then I'll quite happily print print it for you. And then, you know, we we don't have a tremendous amount of knowledge on three D printing. We're we're learning all the time, but obviously we're quite happy to, to pass on what we know. And give our advice where possible. But, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's obviously free. You know, there's plenty of free software out there for you to have a go at designing files, absolutely free of charge. So, you know, you can just see how you get on with it. You might enjoy it or, or crack it, and then you might be able to teach us a thing or two. Because yeah. <laughs> when it comes to designing, I've got no idea. I mean, you know, there's different software that does different stuff. But obviously, Tinkercad, I think, is the most basic level. But yeah. Google do one called SketchUp. Um, that's free to use. But I opened that once, and it's like uh, Photoshop. I don't know a thing about Photoshop. There's so many settings to play with. And I think Google SketchUp is very similar. So, I mean, if you've got a knowledge of um, Photoshop, you might get along with uh, Google SketchUp. And, and you know... It, it just depends. Um, but yeah, just have a play with the software to see what you can come up with. Yeah, and it, like most things, it's just keep keep having a plod with it. There's and then a lot of stuff you, that... Yeah, exactly. And then if you do get into the swing of it and, you know, and you, you're managing to do these files, then maybe it would be worth thinking, oh, maybe I should get myself a 3D printer. Yeah, and actually the 3D printers aren't that expensive. We've, we've been looking at a really cheap one, uh, the Creality Ender. It's about 100, excuse me, about 150 to 200 pounds. Uh, well, that's the one I sent you, though. Yeah, I couldn't believe yeah. how cheap that was. I had to look at it again. Yeah, or if you're that way inclined, build one. Hmm. I mean, I'm so, lucky enough to but have I mean, mine was 300, but mine's got bigger print. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, I start my basic. I started off, as we've I've covered before. I started off with a very basic um, part work printer, and I managed to obtain that very cheap off eBay after building my friend's one. Um, now that was okay. I've spent a lot of money on it, as Penny we covered in a previous, uh, um, you know, a previous video, but. If you, the cheaper you buy, it seems you have to spend more money on it, upgrading it to get it to do anything half decent. Um, but obviously, I'm quite lucky because I've managed to get my hands on an Ultimaker 2, which brand new is about 1800 quid's worth. Um, and I've, I'm very lucky to get one uh, through my work. Um, very cheap. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm lucky to have that. But even with that, I mean, that is a, a very expensive printer. I've found myself upgrading parts. So, um, yeah, it's um, but you know, it'll do it'll do the job. And a lot of it's to do with settings, as Penny knows. You know, oh God, don't I? There's so much. There's so many variables, and it's not just a case of plugging the printer in. Um, you know, I think when Penny first got excited about getting a 3D printer, I did warn her. I said, please don't expect this to work. Just plug it in and go. <laughs> and you were like, what, really? And I'm like, yeah, there was a lot to sort of get your head around. But, and then you were a bit, bit of a, in a bit of a flat to start with, and I had to come on and oh, I helped you. But, I remember the night I printed I, I built it. Oh God, yeah, it was so frustrating <laughs> my end because I, I just wanted to jump in and help you, but I yeah. trying to explain it over a camera, it was difficult. But you no, know, you got there in the end, and um, now you know I, you know, I'd say you're sort of basically on the same level as me in such a short amount yeah. of time. But I've passed on everything I know. You've taken that on board. You've learned more, so you've taught me a few things. Yeah, 
and now I, I, I see us sort of at the same level now. Yeah, and then of maybe course I've got the slight the... edge when it comes to the actual hardware and building it, but in regards to software and and you know STL files and things, you've you've taken the lead with that. Yeah, but it's just I've been having a go. So, yeah, um... but obviously, but in I'm, the, I'm... on the type of prints you've had, which may not be as good quality as say the Ultimaker, you've had to yeah. do more settings and play around with it more. Yeah. to get it to do um, what you need it to do and you've you've got it uh, in a perfect state now well yeah obviously it's, it's down um, at the moment but oh the prints you're getting recently are miles apart from what you first got and that's oh God, amazing yeah. yeah but also it depends on what i mean the, this this is doing large prints quite well um and if if i if if the absolute quality isn't paramount this is the better printer to use if i start looking at wanting to have to do really good quality prints um like for example if i'm doing models uh figures where they're not any bigger than 100 mil then these small but really good printers are going to be the ones i want to be looking at so hmm. yeah who knows there might be a second printer on the horizon but that 100 um, pound one looks like your one penny but i think with the upgrades that perhaps you've done on yours yeah if they can be put on that printer, I reckon that would be just as good because yeah. there's not really a lot to one. It's as you said, you can just build one, but it's just a case of four yeah. motors, a few pulleys, and it's all it's all I think the most key parts to the printer is the feeder, that's got to be right, yeah. and the actual extruder itself. Yeah, and, and yeah. you can pick up upgrade kits. You know, what about seventy quid? It's, yours? It's, the wheels, the wheels need to turn consistently. Um, apparently, one one of the common faults with my printer is that sometimes you get the wheels have they're not perfectly round. So where you get that little flat spot, it can cause problems. Um, so as long as they work, as long as it's feeding the filament in. And pushing it through the other end, and the temperature is working properly, the heater's working. That's essentially it. As long as the nozzle's going where it needs to go, and obviously you need it to stick to the print bed. Yeah. So I've upgraded the print bed, but the upgrade on the print bed is really simple. That was six pounds from Dunelm. I just replaced the glass with a mirror um, because the glass tends to be not quite straight. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a fun adventure, but it's very frustrating, um, and I'm I'm quite frustrated at the moment because I had a problem. I don't know if my problems were caused by the power cuts, or if it's just um, I don't know. Because I mean, I've done a lot of printing. To be honest with you, if I'm getting the amount of printing I've been doing, that that hot end has lasted me a good couple of months. And it's costing me thirty thirty pound for a new one, um, and it's been running probably at least twelve to sixteen hours a day constantly. And it's it's designed as a home three D print and not a commercial three D print. Well, yeah, I was going to say you might as well open a business because it's always on yeah. the go. Every time I tune into your live feed, I'm like, oh, printer's off again. I'm I'm always trying to time my print so that. If I've got like a two hour print, a five hour print and a seven hour print, I'll try and I'll try and get a print going just before I go to work. And the idea is, is as I come home from my break, it's just finished that print and then I'll load it up with another one. And then if it's like an eight hour print, I'll load that one up just before I go to bed. So it's printing while I'm asleep. And the idea is, is to get as much printing done as I can in every hour. Mm. And uh, but yeah, in all fairness, the amount of printing I've done, if I've got to buy a thirty pound upgrade every two months, um, I'm not overly complaining about it. So, um, but I mean, the the upgraded parts that I've done, where I've spent a bit of money on upgrades, I've had absolutely no problems at all with those. I mean, to be um, fair though, I think your pro your your latest problem wasn't really the fact of the amount of use it's had. I think when you had a hiccup when you were trying to
get the settings, the, didn't you have a bit of a meltdown where it wasn't extruding properly and you ended up with a puddle of filament? I yes. Think that is your problem because it yeah. glued that thermistor in, which wouldn't have normally been the case. So you should have been able to exactly. swap that out and away you would have gone about, again. About two or three weeks ago, I came home to quite literally a golf ball attached to, the, to my uh, extruder no nozzle where it what what it had actually done was it must have stuck to the print i think i think it actually hadn't been leveled properly so it wasn't stuck to the bed properly and then where it didn't extrude properly it wasn't level so as the no nozzle came um it caught the print so what it's doing is it's dragging the print around then because that part of the print is is touching the nozzle which is about 200 degrees that's then melting the plastic, making it soft, which so then it's catching. And eventually the whole print has melted and there's just one big ball. So basically the nozzle is this big and, and there's a mass of plastic about this big. I woke up in the morning, I'm just like, oh my God, how am I going to sort that out? Because the print had finished as well. So the whole lot had gone cold. Mm. And, and then what with it extruding fresh filament, thinking it's printing, that was adding to it. Yeah, so you've got this ball of filament and then it's pushing more in. Um, so it was basically, it was like an enlarged ballpoint pen trying to run around the, the bed. So obviously there was filament all over the place and that slowly burnt off. But I couldn't get all of it out. And then with the power cuts as well, I think it was probably just about on the brink. So obviously if you pull a bit of plastic off, that's going to pull any wires. So it might well be that the, the same usage, this this uh, this thermo, is it? Th th thermo, 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 yeah. This um, heat of the thing, it <laughs> might last me six months. Yeah. I mean, mine, mine's so, been pretty good. I mean, I've had mine over a year on the part work printer. Yeah. And it's yeah, absolutely but you don't fine. use it quite as much. As no, you do, I yeah. don't. I don't. <laughs> but yeah. How how long does a roll of filament last you? Oh God, I've had that one about two years. Two I've years. got loads I'm, as well, haven't I? Whereas I'm buying two rolls of filament a fortnight. Yeah, I've never because I said to Penny, "Oh, a roll of filament will last you months." Nah, not not no. with Penny. Not with Penny. No, no. This, uh, yeah, it's um, yeah. I've probably got a roll of filament in the bin at the moment from failed prints. And um, and all sorts, but yeah, I'm always print something. But uh, it's, it's a new toy, and you know, I'm I'm building like these these paint racks, and I'm I'm doing these electronic parts drawers, and and once I've got them, I've got them, and then I'll run out of things to print, and then I'll start working on other projects, um, you know, and then you know, like how many how many paintbrush holders do I need? Mm. Now, this is this is one of my oh stuck. This is one of my first prints that I did. Little paintbrush holder. That's, that's thanks to you, wasn't it? You gave me the, the file for that. Um, I think so. Well, then, I was going to print that off for you, and you said, "Oh yeah, no, I, I know, that. I know." You always make me feel guilty with that. Um, oh, Anthony, but, Anthony uh, Beavis is here. Good evening. Hello. Oh, hello. I hope you haven't just joined us because we're actually just about to finish shortly. Um, but yeah, I mean one. <laughs> We talked about doing a, a 3D printer show, and, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure because there's some real serious experts out there on uh, 3D printing. But um, I, I would say if it's something that you're interested in, have a look. Um, but if you're like me, don't, because if you look look at enough things at long enough, you'll just decide that you've absolutely got to buy one thing is i think a 3d printer show would be good because like, it's like a beginner's level like our story how we started what what we did wrong and it, oh, you know God, i yeah. think we are going to be able to help some people in a way right but we'll see we'll, we'll see. see yeah it was also all all about time and stuff so yeah um i mean i i like not doing a hell of like too much um, because you start committing yourself to too much, you've got to, you've got to fulfil that level of commitment. I mean, this this route master, we've got ninety three weeks left. 
that's a lot of time and to be perfectly honest with you i don't know what's happening next month you know i could get a job offer where they pay me <coughs> twice as much money um but i've got to work wednesday evenings so um then you've got to start you know do i turn down the extra money and you know they might say penny come and join us you're going to sit on your bum doing nothing all day getting paid three times as much as you're getting at the moment am i going to turn around and go no nope, my youtube audience needs me on a wednesday so you know you just don't know what's going to happen i doubt that's going to happen but but it'd be nice. But if anyone wants to offer me three times more money, I'm listening. Always listening. Um, so, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's something we always, I mean, we talk about all sorts of things. I mean, the some of the crap ideas that we've had is that aren't even worth mentioning. But, you know, we just throw ideas together. So, um, I'm going to do some blatant advertising here. Um, I stream on Twitch. If you've never watched Twitch, have at least have a look at it. Um, I am doing, um, if anyone's familiar with Warhammer, we are, uh, we have a thing called October. Um, during the month of October, we seem to be celebrating Orcs. And I was going to paint up a Blood Bowl team. Blood Bowl is a, like a fantasy football game. Um, and these are some of the figures for them. However, I did an unboxing from Asset Drop, and I really was not expecting this. Um, and I got this figure. And this is absolutely amazing. So this is what I'm painting up on my Twitch shows for the next month. And trust me, it doesn't even look good at the moment. Um, let me find... I've lost, I've lost the head. There we go. So we've put magnets in, so we've got choice of heads. And wait till you see his weapon. Which I know can't fit. So if you are into mythically type creatures, fantasy creatures, I can't get as there he is. I'm sure it goes in there somehow. You know, every time I put this in, it's gone in absolutely fine. There we go, I put it at the wrong angle. So that's a figure that I'm painting up this month. Um, in the evenings, we also... Look at that axis. I think it's about as big as him. And wait till you see the base, guys. Check that out. So he's going to stand on top of the base, pointing at someone, going, you, yeah, you, I'm coming after you. Um... Now, Friday evenings, if you're into your part works or hobbies or anything like that, we tend to do a complete different change. Um, this Friday, I'm going to be doing some electronics. It could be fun. Um, I have bought a solder practice kit. And what you basically get, you get this piece of circuit board and you get lots of little bits of most of the names. Are, that, that's, that's a light. I know that's an LED light. And I know that's a buzzer. And I know what the, the resistors are. And that's about it. And we're going to try and put this together to make a little countdown buzzer thing. You'll press a button to start it. 60 lights will light up. Every second, one light will go out. And when it reaches zero, the buzzer will go off. And this is it's about three and a half pound it costs me. And that's designed for solder practice. Um, soldering is something that I'm not very good at. Um, I can do it well enough to get the job done, but I can't get it done neatly. Um, so I'm hoping that by the time I've soldered nearly 200 solder points, I might be quite good at it. So, um, yeah, if you fancy having a look at Twitch, I do, I have put my description down there somewhere. Um, and as always, we just basically try to have a bit of a laugh and we just chill out. And um, sometimes we don't even do what we're intending to do. So, um, right, do you have anything to add, Horlix? No, I don't think I do. Um, not this... No, don't think I do. Oh, well, the only thing I have got is my latest uh, print video. 
are printed and painted. Oh, yes. I like that. I really did like that. Actually. Which is Uncharted, which is my favourite PlayStation game. Um, so I printed that and tried to paint that with some paint. Went slightly wrong because I ran out of paint and it fell over and it was a bit of a mare. I was impatient. It's my fault. I was impatient. But the most important question here is if you did that again, are you confident you would do a better job? Oh, absolutely. 110%. So therefore, you have learned from cocking it up. Yeah. Brilliant. That's perfect then. That's all you can hope for, isn't it? Mm hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah. No, I think that's it from, uh, from me, my end. Excellent. Right. So, I'm going to end the show then. Um, thank you ever so much for watching, everybody. And a big, big thank you to the 22 people that are still watching now. That's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. So, we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Don't forget, we are doing more electronics next week. Uh, switches and dials are fit to the dashboard, which is then attached to the front of the driver's cab. And I think that's going to look absolutely fab after next week. So take care, guys, and I'll see you all next week. Yeah, Bye -bye. see you later. Bye-bye.